I did it. My research is finished at last. Tomorrow I'll submit it to the professor. It will be a big day. Tomorrow is the anniversary of Dad's disappearance, too. It's already been ten years. Henry Morgan, the famous archaeologist, vanished under mysterious circumstances. This was the most recurring headline in the newspapers. I'm sorry, Dad. I tried really hard to understand where your final research took you. A hello to Mom, and then to sleep. Unfortunately, she can't be here tomorrow. Her latest expedition in the Amazon is taking longer than expected. Let's hope she receives my email. Good night, Mom. Coming! This postman believes that everything he delivers is urgent. One can never even get a few hours rest. It's only 2 p.m. The day has only just started. Let's see. Bills. A letter for me? Nobody writes to me, usually. It's dated July 25th, 2008. The same day my father disappeared. Dear Willie, it's Dad. If you received this letter, it means that my mission didn't go according to plan. I can't linger or I would put your mother and you in danger. You must go to the old inn in Bone Town as soon as possible. Room 09, but never trust anyone. Everything begins there in the warmth of a friendly place. Love, Dad. Hmm. It certainly isn't a prank. The style and handwriting are my father's. I've looked for clues to his disappearance for ten years. And I even got a letter from him. I must leave for Bone Town immediately. I'll have to manage somehow, because Mom is still traveling. But Bone Town isn't far. With a little money and a bike, I can get there in a few hours. I saw the bike around the house. There's even some money around here somewhere. Off we go! Perfect! I already found the bike. Or rather, what's left of it. To leave, I'll need all the other parts, too. Hi, I'm Willie. Would you like to take a short tutorial to learn how to handle things in my world? All right, let's start. My trusty old piggy bank. My mother gave it to me as a present. According to her, it's the best way to learn home economics. Or, in other words, learn to save. And judging by the sound the piggy bank makes, I got pretty good at it. It certainly helped me sleep better. It won't come off. It looks like it's bolted on. An ordinary incandescent table lamp. It simultaneously illuminates and warms. They will come in handy. I'll take them with me. Here they are. Too many drawers. I don't have enough clothes to fill them all. Essential for traveling. Empty. I could fill it up with the stuff inside the boxes around the corner in the corridor. Better shut the closet door so I can get a better grip. It won't be an ISO 9000 certified ladder, but it will do. Got you, wheel. Collecting everything found lying about is a real fixation. It's a tribute to my favorite band by the artist Glenn Fernandez Sardi. I feel more at ease taking it with me. If 
If only there was a rubber chicken. But these could come in handy too. It's always good to have one for a pleasant bike ride. There's a lot of stuff in here, but it's no use to me. Let's take it. One never knows what might come next. I was ready for a nice relaxing bath. Best to postpone it. I see no alternative. Now you'll discover the huge power of a plunger. Nice work. Now I can safely leave home. Well, look what was hiding in the bathtub. It's certainly a part of the bicycle. I'm amazed by the extremely intelligent use I made of it. I better not turn it off. Mom must have had her reasons for leaving it like this. At least I think so. My mother took almost everything with her for this journey. Admire my physical prowess. It's not about bragging to friends. It's the symbol of my family, and I'm proud of it. Strange object. Let's see what happens when I pull one of the branches. I thought so. Ingenious! Typical of my mother. I bet she designed it. Look at the nice ring inside it. It looks ancient, and there's also an engraving inside. Difficult SC Harvis Mag A. I think I know what it is. I'll put it in the bag. It might come in handy. It could contain something important that would be of use to me. It's my mother's alarm clock. Ever since she gave it to me to repair, though, it stopped working altogether. Let's see what's wrong with it. Look what was inside it. And maybe that's why it wasn't working. Replacing the internal alarm with the bicycle bell might not have been a brilliant idea. I don't need a broken alarm clock for my trip. I think I'll need it shortly. This is the map that led my mother to the discovery of her first sunken shipwreck. I've decided to keep this souvenir as a good luck charm. She's been looking for new treasures ever since. A little like my father, before his disappearance. They were always soulmates. Since my father left, mom has devoted herself entirely to me and her work. Then I grew up. Giotto always had one too, or so they say. Wow! Now in your inventory you have items that you can combine. Doing so is very simple. Open the inventory, select an item with the left mouse button, then select a second item. 
If successful, wait a few moments and you'll see these items combine and a brand new one will appear. This will certainly be very useful. Try to combine the item you just found with another item you already have in your inventory. And it came to pass that my criminal career began. Let's see if this rubber hammer might come in handy. Let's not do that anymore. Excellent idea. That way I can open it without causing irreparable damage. I wonder how much I've managed to save in the last few months. Uh, I expected more. All that noise and all I got is this lot of gears? I don't even know how they ended up in here. Et voila! Excellent! The heat from the lamp is melting the oil. It's ready to use now. The screws don't turn. They got rusty with time. The rusty screws are loosening up. I also finished the suntan oil. I better leave the empty bottle here. Now it works. There's information that could be useful. Here are a few notes I've written down lately. Fix mom's alarm clock. And there's more. I can't take it. It serves an important function in this fridge. I used it temporarily to reinforce one of the shelves. If I pull it out, everything will fall down. I first need to fix the shelf. Just what I needed. I couldn't go anywhere without it. In this, my mother used to hide little surprises for me. Let's see if I'm still lucky. Would you look at this? It looks like there's a little emergency money in the bottom of the tins. There's no greater emergency than this. I need a few more parts first. I'd really love to try it. I think there's still something missing. Very good! There's still something missing. Making progress. I can glimpse its shape. Another part. Almost ready. Nearly there. Not long to go. Perfect. A few more parts. Not professional. Nearly there. Not long to go. Nearly there. They connect perfectly. The bike is ready. I just have to take it, and that's it. Bone Town, here I come. Let's go.
It felt like something from my bike was missing. I forgot to mount the brakes in my hurry to leave. Fortunately, I escaped without any major damage. Better take what's left. I'm especially sad about the bike. I was very fond of it. I've arrived at the Dead Man Inn. This was the place I always stayed with mom and dad when we came here. And it's the same place indicated by my father in his letter. Good evening, my good man. Good evening, boy. How can I help you? I need a place where I can stay tonight. It's your lucky day, boy. The Dead Man Inn is the best in the business. Very good. I almost feel at home. Are there any rooms available? I'm happy to check, but I have to warn you we are in peak season. Hmm. In this one, we still have to clean up bloodstains. Room 08 is already occupied by me. I just have number 09 and 10 left. Then 09 would be perfect. That is also my lucky number. In that case, I can't do anything other than give you room 10. But I just told you I'd like to have 09. Everybody likes number 9. If I gave you that room, the next customer could only take number 10, which nobody likes. So they would leave. I could leave too, since I'm not pleased with that. Of course. Indeed, you have the look of someone who can go and choose another inn. For your information, Dead Man Inn is the most comfortable, as well as the only inn, in a 40-kilometer area. You can also go find yourself another inn and come back tomorrow morning. I'm always here. So, room 09 or 10? Room 10 is okay. Do you have money for the accommodation? Yes, I think I can pay for one night in this amazing resort. I don't know what a resort is, but it is sufficient that you have the money to pay. Here's the money. Kid, this isn't much. It will only be good enough for one night. I think that's enough. Good. To whom do I have the honor of speaking? Morgan. Willie Morgan. Morgan. That name sounds familiar to me. Have you already been in our lovely little town? Many years ago, but I was very young. Maybe you remember my dad, Henry Morgan. Henry Morgan, you said? Something springs to mind, but I think a long time must have passed. Yes, a long time. I'd say ten years since he disappeared. And why do we have the pleasure of seeing you again in Bone Town? For the anniversary of my father's disappearance. Today it's ten years exactly. There's always a good reason to stay at the Dead Man Inn of Bone Town. I have no doubt about it. Now I have to get back to my job. Help yourself to the key to room number 10. Thank you. Once you are settled in your room, you'll find a pre-printed form. I need to complete the check-in. Bring it back as soon as you have filled it out. All right, thank you. Thanks, and goodbye. <sighs> Hello, boss. It's me. You won't believe this. Henry Morgan's son just showed up here. Henry's son? Why did he come here? He hasn't said too much about the reason for his visit. What do you want me to do? Do I warn Bob? Yes. Standard procedure. Okay. As soon as the kid comes back here, Bob will take a good look at the belongings of the young Morgan. Sure, boss. I'll keep you posted. See you later. There are a series of pictures portraying famous people who seem to have stayed here. Stanko Stupar immortalized Abraham Lincoln. I'd rather not touch that substance. I shudder to think what it might be. Color and density do not bode well.
It's an aftershave. Somebody was in a hurry to leave the room and forgot it. A peculiar scent. I wouldn't say it's good, but at least it adds a different touch to the place. It's the form the innkeeper was talking about. First I have to fill in this form, and then I can use the services of the room. I haven't got a pen with me, and can't see one around. Better go back to the innkeeper and ask for more info. I saw the stain in the hallway. You have very good eyesight. It blends well with the rest of the upholstery. Well... I'm waiting for the cleaning lady to use her expertise to remove that. I'd like to have a touch of freshness in the air when it's done. I expect that won't be easy. Thanks, and goodbye. <sighs> I'm back with the form you talked about, but I haven't got a pen with me and I still have to fill it out. Doesn't matter. Give it to me so I can write the essential data down. Thank you. Name and surname. Your memory is a bit spotty. I'm Willie Morgan. Sorry, kid. You know how it is. Age plays shameful tricks. You seem like a different person now. Kinder and more friendly. Maybe I left you with a bad impression before. I'd like to make things right now. Did you hear that too? Uh, hear what? There are a lot of noises in this inn. Did you hear it now? It's probably some little animal. The one who made that sound must be a big one. And how? What now? Did you hear that noise again? Yes, but I don't think you should be worried. It's normal. In fact, I think it's finished now. How can you be so sure? It happens all the time. As soon as you open a door, Drafts let the wind through and it does funny things. Okay, what else do you need? I'd say I'm okay with this. I have everything I need. Only name and surname? Here in Bone Town, we need very little information. The rest will fall right into place. Okay, now I must get back to work. Me too. I'm very busy. With what? Okay, thank you. Um... Oh my god! And to think that, according to the innkeeper, it was just a little animal. Luckily, I always keep the important things with me. Never trust anyone. Dad was right. I better warn the innkeeper. What the hell happened here? A very strong draft ransacked my room. You should be more careful about leaving the door open. Hurricanes are frequent this time of year. Summer hurricanes localized into one room in particular? You can't rule anything out. Otherwise, what do you think happened? I think I left the door open and a board did the rest. It wouldn't be the first time those animals have made trouble here at the Dead Man Inn. But according to you, is such a thing actually possible? Forget it. So how did this happen, in your opinion? How did you get here so fast? I heard screaming and thought there was a lady in danger. But I didn't even scream. Then it was my sixth sense, boy. The sixth sense of an old innkeeper. What could have happened, according to you? I guess a robber came in and trashed the whole room. I cannot be 100% sure, but all clues lead to that. Have they taken anything valuable from you? I have all my valuable things on me. Better this way. The Dead Man Inn is the most comfortable in the area, but it doesn't have any insurance in the event of theft, disappearance, or death. I was lucky it was just a theft. Unfortunately, there have been many such cases in Bone Town lately. Seeing the current condition of this room, 
Can I have room 09 now? I already explained that I can't. I'm awaiting a huge influx of tourists in the next few days, and I need that room. If you could wait just a few minutes, I will clean everything up like it was before. Then, as compensation, I won't make you pay from tomorrow night on. Actually, I just wanted to stay for tonight. It'd be enough if you returned the money I already gave you. Boy, don't push it. That is my offer. Take it or leave it. Your kindness astounds me. Seems I can't do anything other than accept it. Wise choice. Now, if you can clear out, I have to clean up the room. If you give me the key back, I'll clean up everything and give it back to you at the entrance. I'll take a moment. Using the back door, I'll be at the entrance before you arrive. Thanks, my good man. Have you already cleaned up the room? Yes, everything's in order again. Here's the key. Okay, thanks. And you have all the services of the Dead Man Inn at your disposal. Like what, for example? The most important one is room service. And following that, the Do Not Disturb. How does the room service work? When the customers call, it is the duty of every good innkeeper to answer. I try to be as fast as possible so as to not leave my position untended. If you don't see me at the counter, it's because some impediment forced me to use the back door. There are a lot of steps to get there. Going down is not a problem and speeds up my movement, but climbing really slows me down. Thanks, that seems clear to me. What's the Do Not Disturb? It's this amazing object. Only paper of the highest quality for our customers. With the writing, Do Not Disturb, in giant letters. You just have to hang this on the door. And I'll know you don't want to be disturbed. Here, take it. Thanks, very useful. Thanks, and goodbye. <sighs> Let's see if I can. Done. This sign is useless now. I'd rather not take it with me. The things I have to do. Let's just hope it doesn't spill. I wouldn't really know what to use to get rid of this stink. Very good. It looks like the cleaning has finally started. Just how I pictured it. And now something classy. The contents haven't changed, but now there's a fresh musk ox scent. What now? Oh, that must be the new guest. I saw straight away that he was a troublemaker. Better go check. Agile and silent like a ninja. I didn't even realize the cleaning lady finally got to work. Better not walk across it. 
I'd risk ruining this beautiful work. Oh, she also added the essence of musk ox, my favorite. I'll go around the back. That guy's gonna have to wait for a second. Nobody's coming. Better go check the entrance. This is my chance. Let's hope there won't be any other obstacles. At last! I don't trust taking them. There's the chance they could have been eaten by mice, the owner of the place, or the cleaning lady. In any- They're apple cores. They really leave much to be desired as a welcome gift. Everything starts there, in the warmth of a friendly place. I think my father meant warmth in a literal sense. Perhaps he hid something in the fireplace. Let's try searching there. What is this? This brick doesn't seem to be bonded to the fireplace like all the others, but I can't rip it out. It seems after all these years it is partially calcified back into the fireplace. I need something to grab hold of the cracks. Tradition tells us it's better not to spy on showers with the curtain closed. Look what's inside. Somebody forgot a nail file. Better take it. It could come in handy. It seems to be working. I can take out the mortar holding the brick. Clever, a niche. Let's see what's inside. It looks like an old library card. It belonged to my father, Henry Morgan. Last read book, Properties of Concrete. What did my father want to tell me? It's a card for the Bone Town Library. The card belongs to Henry Morgan, my father. Let's see the last red book, Properties of Concrete. What was he working on in his final research? Better go to the library to make some inquiries. After this amazing night, it'd be better to go back to my room and rest. First, I'd rather take the key to room 09 back to reception. I'd prefer to avoid having problems with the innkeeper. I have a really big day ahead of me tomorrow. I think the time has come to find out what Dad was working on. I better check the library card again. I'm sure Dad left me some other clue. Good morning, good sir. Good morning. How was your night? There were moments I thought I wouldn't survive. Then I saw a ray of light and realized that the worst was over. These are just some of the thrills you can experience here at the Dead Man Inn. What happened to Bone Town in the last few years? I remember when I used to come here that it was a nice little town. I think it's just progress. The young prefer to go try their luck elsewhere, apart from a few exceptions. It's just down to us from the older generation to keep up the honor of Bone Town by welcoming the incoming tourists with love and professionalism. I'd have to dispute that, actually. <sighs> Is the public library still there? Sure, boy. It's one of the crown jewels of Bone Town. At least it is according to what Margaret, our librarian, tells us. I'm simply reporting what's said because I personally never go to such places. Strange. I would have bet the opposite. Could you tell me where it is? Turn left at the main square, just outside the door. Boy, if you don't want to get lost, use this. It's an old Bone Town postcard. 
but it was used as a tourist map during the Golden Years. It could be of use to orient yourself and move around Bone Town. Thank you. Are you interested in something in particular? Just to reminisce a little bit. My father used to take me there all the time. Thanks, and goodbye. <sighs> Better leave the key here. I don't know if I'll want to avail myself of this service again tonight. There you go. Now I can leave. Wow, there are some extremely rare first editions here. It's the public library of Bone Town. I never imagined it would have survived, given the state of the town. Good morning. Good morning. How can I help you? What happened to Bone Town in the last few years? The city has always held more allure, at the expense of the small villages, and Bone Town is no exception. All the young people left when they had the chance, leaving the town in its current sorry state. It seems you know our town well, although you're so young. Can I ask your name? Of course. I'm Willie Morgan. I'm Margaret. Margaret Teach. But for those who attend the library, I'm just Margaret. Once there was a Morgan here in Bone Town too. Then he left, seeking fortune, and he became famous. But he never stopped coming back to visit Bone Town. I don't think you know him. You mean Henry Morgan, by any chance? You surprise me, and that doesn't happen often. The point is, I know him very well. Henry was my father. I'm sorry, kid, I didn't know. Don't worry, it's been a while. Ten years ago, right? How do you know that? Kid, I'm the librarian. I basically remember everything that is put on paper, and Henry used to come to our library a lot. Do you know anything about his disappearance? Unfortunately, only what I've read about. One night he was here in Bone Town. The morning after, it's like he vanished into thin air. Not a clue, not a trace. No letters or anything that could have guided the search parties to a solution. Do you know what he was working on in his final research? I don't know. He always read a lot, basically all the tomes you can find in here. And sometimes, at his request, I had to order books from other cities as well. Do you know if he had enemies, maybe? Henry? Let's be serious. I think there were very few men as affable as him. Thanks for the information. Don't mention it. If I can be of any more help, just ask. I need to consult one of your tomes. It's always a pleasure when someone wants to benefit from the services offered by our library. What are you looking for? Not very famous pirate songs by Threepwood. Unfortunately, that's one of the most requested books. There's even a waiting list to consult it. Properties of Concrete. Oh, what a surprise! It's not among the more popular in Bone Town. I guess this is the second consultation in more than 10 years. Doesn't it get the attention it deserves? Here in Bone Town, people don't read a lot, especially a book like that. I could never have managed to face it either. Where can I find it? I guess it's somewhere on the upper floor. You should recognize it easily. Thank you. Thanks, and goodbye. Thank you for visiting the Bone Town Library. If you need a specific book, you can ask me, Ms. Teach. Or just Margaret. Thanks. I'll keep that in mind. It seems to be a very old crate. Hmm. This lock is peculiar, to say the least. I'm pretty sure that I'd need a special key if I wanted to open it. It's the famous book, Properties of Concrete. The last book read by my father. 
It's stuck under the huge number of books on the desk. I must find a way to free it. How? Should I remove everything on top of it? There's no time. And above all, I wouldn't know where to put all these books. It's one of those old message boards on which they hung the wanted posters. Here in Bone Town, time seems to have stopped. There are still posters of the gang that was raging here decades ago. The members have become famous. I recognize the posters of Rufi, Nami, and Zoro. The others are faded from exposure to bad weather. There's also a little footnote. Posters offered by the Lafitte Amusement Park. I don't know how, but I hope it might come in handy. It seems like the propeller of an old vessel. There's also some writing. Flying Dutchman. I don't think it's that Flying Dutchman. Let's try. It worked! Check out what we have here. Let's see what it is. It's another letter from my father. It's dated July 22nd, 2008, earlier than the other one. There's also a piece of paper that seems more ancient, but I can't figure out what it is. Better take a look right now. If Dad did all this so that I'd find it, there must be something important. Now I understand what the piece of paper was that I found with the letter. Dad always performed great feats, but I never imagined he was looking for kids' treasure. It has always been said that it was basically a legend. I don't remember the complete story exactly, but maybe the librarian can help me. And I have a list of names. Better start asking information of the townsfolk without attracting too much attention. I don't need my father's old library card anymore. Even if someone found it, it would be useless. I have the letter and the piece of map belonging to my dad. Am I wrong or did you tell me your name is Margaret Teach? That's correct. Do you know a man named Charles Teach? Your question surprises me. How do you know my great-great-grandfather? I'm doing some research on the genealogy of Bone Town, and I stumbled upon the Teach family. Yes, it's been several generations now since the Teaches settled in Bone Town. What can you tell me about Charles Teach in particular? He was the one who brought the name Teach here to Bone Town, but of his past, little is known. My great-grandma told me that he was a former fisherman with a knack for books. This library is a donation he made to the city of Bone Town just before he died. After he arrived here in Bone Town, he devoted himself exclusively to reading, and many of these books were bought directly by him. He had so many of them that he basically founded the town library, which then became the family business for the following generations, too. And he didn't leave anything else apart from the books? All he left is stored on the upper floor, but it's mostly junk. The real treasure was his books. There's also an old crate without a key, but it looks empty. Do you by any chance know the story of Captain William Kidd? Sure, it is mostly a legend. In the golden era of piracy, Kidd stood out for his endeavors, if you could call them that. The endeavors of a pirate aren't exactly heroic most of the time. Anyway, his ship, the Adventure Galley, was supposedly filled with treasures when it suddenly disappeared. A few years later, in 1701, Kidd was captured and executed, but his ship and the crew were never found. What do you think happened? What always happened at that time. Kidd and his crew squandered all the loot, and to cover their tracks, they sold or even burned the ship. After this story, Kidd became legendary.
Thank you. What's that old crate upstairs? It belonged to Charles Teach, a great-great-grandfather of mine. Many years ago, we opened it with the help of a locksmith, but it was empty. Then the key got lost again, and nobody has any interest in it anymore. Maybe the locksmith has a copy of it somewhere. I never feel like throwing it away. It's still a family heirloom after all. Thanks, and goodbye. Thank you for visiting the Bone Town Library. If you need a specific book, you can ask me, Miss Teach, or just Margaret. Thanks, I'll keep that in mind. Hmm, very strange. I have the feeling I'm being watched. Better be careful. You never know what can happen in Bone Town. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Um, can I do something for you? I am very busy and I'd hate to lose time. Are you the museum janitor? Uh, <laughs> uh, no. I'm the curator, as well as the only artist in Bone Town. Remarkable. Busy doing what? Oh, uh, I don't think you'd understand. You don't look like you have an open mind like us artists. Please, I'm very curious. Uh, no. Come on, share it with me. Um, uh, no. Okay, I don't think it was that important anyway. Um, not important. Are you kidding me? My research is, uh, um, of vital importance for Bone Town and its history. Research for peace of mind? Uh, funny. Finding himself? Uh, no. What kind of research? Um, I'm trying to clear the name of one of the most controversial figures of Bone Town. Who are we talking about? Tom Rayleigh. He spent almost his whole life in here. Was he a researcher too? Uh, no. Uh, this was a prison once. They say that Rayleigh, because of his alcohol problems, spent most of his sober time in here. In every town there's a drunkard. Um, no. Tom wasn't a drunkard. His artistic life was very troubled. My research proved that. Have you already done other research on Rayleigh? Um, yes. Uh, you can find everything about it in the book I wrote on Rayleigh. You can take a copy if you like. Thanks. How come you're so obsessed with Tom Rayleigh? Um, it's not that I'm obsessed. Tom Rayleigh was an artist, just like me. Some of the objects in here are his works. But, as with all misunderstood geniuses, he had a devil inside. Um, some people claim that, in the midst of a drunken stupor, he could produce his best works. But once he was sober, he destroyed those works because he deemed them not to have been done by him. And I, being a misunderstood genius myself, now want to clear his image. If you say so. And how do you think you can do that? Uh, I'm trying to recover all the works left by the master. And in the meantime, I'm tracing Rayleigh's great-grandsons by delivering the only thing he left here in Bone Town. His dignity? Uh, no. Money? Um, an artist with money? I don't think that's possible. A toothbrush? Um, don't joke about that. We artists are not interested in personal care. I'm glad to hear that. I'm talking about that envelope. What are the contents of the envelope? Um, I don't know. It's an official document classified by the police and kept here in the museum. It saves for Rayleigh's heirs. I can't open it. It would go against my artist's code of ethics. 
and probably against some laws as well. Um, yes. I'm looking for Rayleigh's heirs to deliver it. So I might know what happened to Rayleigh once he left Bone Town too. Can you repeat what you know about- Uh, well, you can find all the info in the book I wrote. But summing up, Rayleigh was an artist. Even if he had alcohol problems. He could draw as very few could. But he's wrongly known only for his reputation as a drunkard. And I want to clear his name by preparing an exhibition for his works. Goodbye. Um, yes. Goodbye. There's something written on it. For the heirs of Tom Rayleigh. It's one of the few pieces left by Tom Rayleigh. Ancient sources said that he was a prodigy in cartography drawing. But everything has been lost. I understand. I'd say it's scary. It's my handiwork. It seemed to me that the subject respected all the classical canons. Maybe they're not the same canons I studied at school. I have no time for this kind of reading right now. There's something written. Free. Maybe it will come in handy. Go ahead and take it. It will open both your heart and your mind. Some stickers to support Tom Rayleigh's cause are included as well. We also need your help to make this artist known. Thanks. Prisons, the story of Tom Rayleigh. Hmm, now I know why this book is free. It seems more like a series of rambling stories instead of a serious biography. Maybe there's just one bit of plausible information. Here it says that Tom Rayleigh's past is dark. He was repeatedly put in prison in Bone Town for being drunk and disorderly. The stickers are nice, but the book is useless to me. I'd rather put this book back in its place. Probably someone else will find it more interesting. <laughs> um. uh, what do you think you're doing? Have you seen what is written on the envelope? It's the property of Tom Rayleigh's heirs. But I'm one of his great-grandsons. I'm a researcher, as well as a capable artist. Bring me concrete proof and you can have the envelope. Until then, the envelope will remain museum property. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the One-Eyed Jack of the Bellamy family. I glimpsed the menu outside the club. What's your specialty? Chicken, kid. Delicious, free-range chicken. Only chicken? Absolutely, kid. Chicken is our main ingredient. Healthy, genuine, and it's not fattening, so you can eat as much as you want. We Bellamy's have invented more than 100 recipes to serve it with. A diverse menu, then. How's business going? Money is not important to the Bellamy's. Our forefather, Eddie Bellamy, left us a little nest egg to pursue our family mission. And what would that be? Find the Chosen One. Are you a great-grandson of Eddie Bellamy? Absolutely, kid. My great-great-great-great-grandfather was the best cook of the Seven Seas. He was the one who founded the first One-Eyed Jack. And since then, we've come a long way. Do you mean that you've expanded all over the world? Absolutely not. Bone Town has always been the one and only place where you can taste one of our delicacies. Do you mean that you've introduced new original recipes? Oh, absolutely not. Nobody can improve Grandfather Eddie's recipes. A distant cousin tried to do that, starting his own company, the Mix Something. But I haven't heard about it since, so I don't think he had our luck. Surely not your luck, yeah. I don't get it, but it's okay anyway. What do you mean by chosen one? The family legend says that Eddie Bellamy, progenitor of the Bellamy's, learned every recipe on how to cook chicken. But his efforts in the kitchen seemed not to be appreciated by customers, who considered his recipes mere common chicken, bumpkins. So he created the only meal that was not chicken-based, the Bellamy cookie. 
The patrons seemed to be thrilled by the extraordinary innovation, but Eddie, given the indifference his cooking received before that, imposed one condition. Only the chosen one could taste the cookie from the Bellamy recipe. And since then, from generation to generation, the search has kept going. Which cookie are we talking about? The sacred cookie, contained in that glass case, built to keep its fragrance intact. How long has it been in that case? Since the day it was baked by Eddie Bellamy. And according to legend, it seems Eddie found a recipe for a pastry that could last for centuries without losing its fragrance. Do you mean that in all these years, nobody was able to earn the right? Absolutely not. That is the original cookie. Never has another one been baked. How can you recognize the chosen one? That'll be the only one who can pass the test. What test? The menu, kid. The menu. Only the worthy will listen to the entire menu without blinking an eye. And at that point, he'll have earned the cookie, along with honor and fame. Very epic. Where does the test take place? At the table. When you feel ready, take your seat, and we'll see if you might be the chosen one. But don't get your hopes up. We're extremely selective. Thanks, and goodbye. Thanks to you, and enjoy your stay in Bone Down. I see you want to prove yourself. When you're ready, call me. I'll be right there. I feel ready. Very well. I'm coming. Let's begin the test. We'll soon know if you're the chosen one or just another common person. Our menu includes mushroom chicken, algae chicken, egg chicken, spicy chicken, sweet corn chicken, pepper chicken, olive chicken, chicken and vinegar, blah, blah, chicken, blah, 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 free range, blah, 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 herb crusted, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Kid. Hey, kid. The test is over. I'm sorry. I thought you were different from the others. For now, you're not the chosen one. And yet I was sure I'd be the one. I can't see what's inside. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. I'm sorry, do, do we know each other? It's been a while, hasn't it, Uncle Steve? Uncle Steve? There was only one child that called me that. It can't be. Willie, is that really you? Yes, Steve, it's really me, Willie Morgan. Son, how are you? Sorry if I don't get up, but my back is killing me. Sitting here all day is bad for my health. All good, Steve. Thank you. Tell me, what brought you back to Bone Town? It's been years since the last time I saw you. I've been missing Bone Town. I can hardly believe it. Lately, nobody ever comes back to Bone Town. For the anniversary of my dad's disappearance, it's been ten years. I was thinking of swinging by the cemetery. Already ten years? Time seems to have stopped in Bone Town since then. I sought refuge in my job to forget. I don't see your mother. Did she know you're here? I told her I was leaving. She's away on a business trip. How is she? I tried many times to contact you in recent years, but she never answered. It was very tough for her, too. She preferred to make a clean break from the past, concentrating on me and her job. Bone Town is a memory that still hurts a lot. I understand. How are things going here in Bone Town? Not very well, I'd say. It's becoming harder and harder to run Bone Town. People leave, and the problems are constantly increasing. Yes, when I got here, I had problems parking my bike. Parking problems as well? That too must go on the list. You mean the lack of courtesy at the Old Inn? Are you staying at the Old Inn? The owner seems to be grumpy and surly. But actually... actually... All right, I'll try to talk to him at the first opportunity. I'll write it down among the many things to do. I'd let you stay here, but to deal with the city expenses, I left my old house. Now I sleep in that little room over there. 
It's the only way I've found to be able to run Bone Town as best as I can. Have you ever thought of hiring someone to give you a hand? Yes, but funds are limited, and nobody wanted to take on this responsibility. I saw some construction work on the buildings. That's one of the bigger problems in the city. It seems that our water resources are drying up. Some people say that upriver, certain companies have been doing excavations that caused the fracturing of some faults. But I launched an investigation, and there's no correlation. So I'm trying to solve the problem by recovering rainwater. And at the moment, it seems to be working. I hope so for Bone Town. Do you remember what happened to my father? It's always painful for me to talk about Henry. We grew up almost like brothers, before he decided to leave and become one of the most famous archaeologists in the world. Despite his work, he always found the time to come back here to the family and to meet his old friends. Unfortunately, his disappearance is still shrouded in mystery. The night before that fateful day, we went out together. We said goodbye in front of the old inn where he was staying. The next morning, I stopped by to say hello, but there was no trace of him. His room was intact. The innkeeper said he didn't see him going out. That's all I know. Since then, I've been racking my brain to understand what happened, but Henry seems to have vanished into thin air. Just like Mom always tells me. Do you, by any chance, know what Dad was working on? I wouldn't know. Whenever he'd come to Bone Town, he told us fantastic stories of the places he explored. We felt like we were there with him. Dad was always an exceptional narrator. When he told me a story before bed, I couldn't sleep right away. But instead, spent a good part of the night fantasizing. He used to do the same thing with us here in Bone Town. Everyone was enthralled by him. Do you remember what happened to my father? It's always painful for me to talk about Henry. We grew up almost like brothers. Before he decided to leave and become one of the most... Despite his unfortunate... The night before that, we said goodbye. The next morning, his room was... That's all I know. Since then... Just like Mama... Hi, Steve. Hi, Willie, and welcome back to Bone Town. I can't show you around, but for anything else, feel free to ask. Thanks. See you later. Come back whenever you want. You'll always find me here. Thanks. What a weird globe. It's covered in notes. I think he's Steve. Steve Bonnet. He has aged fast. These are stamps of Bone Town. Better ask for permission. I'd risk looking like a thief. I'm sorry, I'd prefer you not touch it. There's some important notes and I don't want to lose them. Sure. Can I borrow a stamp? Of course, as long as you use it responsibly. Even if they're dated back, they're the official stamps of Bone Town. Thanks, I'll use them well. Actually, when you're finished with your stuff, you can help me out with that stamp. I have a lot of paperwork to authenticate. Gladly. See you later. Come back whenever you want. You'll always find me here. Thanks. I might need one. I'll take the more worn one. It's the Bone Town Armory. Sorry, can I take these scissors? It seems to me it's the only thing suitable for you in this shop. Round edges for greater security. Go ahead and take them. And don't forget to advertise Roger's Weapon Shop. Um, thank you.
It's a souvenir photo booth and some posters belonging to the Lafitte Park. There's also a super promotion. One shot, three posters. Interesting. Let's try and hope it still works. There's a super promotion. With a single shot, you'll see yourself in your current form, in the guise of a pirate, and, brand new option, in the guise of a drunk pirate. All offered by the Lafitte Amusement Park. The things you do to attract customers. Woo! I'd better go out and recover the posters. I'm curious to admire the different versions of myself. Great, three posters of me. I wouldn't say I'm exactly photogenic, but the flash didn't exactly help either. It could be a good idea. Now it seems that the wanted man is Tom Rayleigh. The resemblance to me is remarkable. Here you are. It's a wanted poster with the name of Tom Rayleigh. If only there was something to make it official, I could be sure this poster is authentic. Sorry, I must have the wrong poster. Let's give a touch of authenticity to this poster. Now it seems that it was issued by a town hall department. The stamp has done its duty. I don't need it anymore. Here you are. Interesting. Sure, they are wanted posters of Tom Rayleigh. I found them at home in an old chest left to us by one of my ancestors. I know that in the past he had some problems with the law. My poor great-great-great-grandfather Tom. Um, actually, they look authentic. The resemblance to you is evident, especially after he drank a bit. Oh, thanks? And the stamp is authentic as well. There is no doubt you're one of Tom's heirs. Finally, I have something for you. Take that envelope. Tom forgot it here, in the old prison after his last, um, visit. Since then, nobody has ever seen him anymore. Can you tell me what happened to him? He then moved west, becoming very famous. Just as I thought. I have to follow his path. Take his envelope and make your forefather proud of you. Now I have to refine my technique so that it will at least be equal to that of Master Rayleigh. Thanks a lot. Better leave before opening the envelope. Let's open it. I'm intrigued to see what Tom Rayleigh left me. As I suspected, inside there's both a piece of the map I was looking for and a little flask. By the smell, I'd say the rumors about Tom's drinking problems were true. Best to add this piece of the map to the others. Let's just hope the contents of the flask won't spill out into the bag. I don't want to give the impression of being a drunkard. Hello? Boss, it's me, 
Bob is keeping an eye on the young Morgan. It looks like he's snooping around Bone Town, but we still don't know the reason. He's either particularly good or he has nothing to hide. I don't trust him. It's strange that Henry's son shows up again in town after all these years. Continue with the surveillance. Sooner or later, he'll make a wrong move. Okay, boss. I'll keep you posted. Good. I'm close this time, and another Morgan won't stop me. It could be a good idea. Now I have a nice pair of cardboard eyes. I see you want to prove yourself. When you're ready, call me. I'll be right there. It could work. I feel ready. Very well. I'm coming. Let's begin the test. We'll soon know if you're the chosen one or just another common person. Our menu includes mushroom chicken, algae chicken, egg chicken, spicy chicken, sweet corn chicken, pepper chicken, olive chicken, chicken and vinegar, blah, blah, chicken, blah, 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 free range, blah, 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 blah herb crusted, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Kid. Hey, kid. The test is over. I saw you fall into a trance, just like in the legend that has been passed down for generations. You're the chosen one. The one who can taste the unique and incomparable Bellamy cookie. After the sixth plate, I felt the force flowing strong in me. I know. The Chosen One has this power. Keep the key. With this, you'll have access to the Bellamy treasure. Thank you. I'll put it to good use. Good. I don't need these cardboard eyes anymore. It still seems very beautiful and very tasty. Since I'm the chosen one, I'm entitled to it. It's the original Bellamy cookie. Inside should still be the message from Eddie Bellamy. I can't open it. After all these years, the dough is hardened. I need something to break the cookie. Blacksmith since 1827. I think he knows his business. Let's see if there's anyone here. They could always come in handy. It really looks like it, but I don't think it could be that very hammer. I don't know how, but it could be useful. They look like long blacksmith tongs. 
Better take them with me. You never know. An old anvil. It still seems in good condition. That's a good idea. This anvil gives me a perfect support. Now I have to find something with which to try to open it. That's a good idea. Only the imitation of an ancestral weapon will allow the chosen one to perform his duty. After the impact, the hammer disappeared. Maybe it wasn't a copy of Thor's hammer, but at least the cookie broke. Inside, there is something left by Eddie Bellamy. Better take it all to not leave any trace. So I find myself with the pieces of a biscuit that dates back centuries, and a message. Hmm, it doesn't seem like the classic fortune cookie message. It's a piece of the map, just like my dad said. Better add it to the others. That's three pieces. I'm out for repair. Don't touch anything. It looks like the blacksmith has a lot to do. The engraving says J. Roger. Let's try to see if there's something that might be useful to my research. Oops, I better put everything back as it was. Sorry, my mistake. Careful, boy. I don't like to repeat myself, so I'll tell you only once. It's not wise taking something without permission in a shop that sells weapons. Thanks for the advice. This alarm is a problem. I have to find a way to avoid activating it. Good morning. Good morning to you, young man. Are you interested in something? I need weapons. Many weapons. No problem. Here you can find as many as you want. And if you don't see something around, I can order it for you. But I need your ID and your carry permit. I'll be back with the documents. Many documents. I'm sure of it. Excuse me. Uh, all these weapons are messing with my mind. How long has this shop been running? Basically ever since Bone Town existed. In every town there is a shop selling weapons. And Rogers is the ultimate shop in the city! We have weapons from all countries and all ages. Our centerpiece is that gun on display over there. It dates all the way back to the early 1700s. My grandpa found it hidden in his attic. It's in a perfect state of preservation. I'd only like to take a look, thanks. I couldn't help but notice the gun on display. You have a good eye, kid. It's the finest piece we have. It's an authentic weapon from the early 1700s. My grandpa found it in the attic, and since then it has always been on display here in our shop. We've done lots of research on it, but we were never able to establish provenance. We know that it dates back centuries, and it's a unique piece. It is unmatched in handling and finish. How it ended up in my grandpa's attic is currently a mystery. There's an inscription, J. Roger, we think it belonged to one of our forefathers. And in our family tree, there's nobody whose name started with a J. The first Roger to arrive here in Bone Town was Johan. But he was an Icelandic fisherman. How much are you selling it for? It's the only piece in the entire collection not for sale. Why's that? It's needed to give our shop a certain prestige. Without this, we would just be another common emporium selling weapons. Instead, Many people pass through here because they know this relic is here. If I sold it, many customers wouldn't return. I understand. There must be something for which you would be willing to part with that gun. Absolutely not. There is no other weapon identical to this. You could try to find another identical one, but according to the research we did, it's a unique piece. And even if I found another one of the same value, I could never trade it. As I already told you, our patronage is based, at the end of the day, on this heirloom. That's why we installed a very sophisticated alarm system that goes off as soon as the weapon is removed. How does your alarm system work? It detects the presence, weight, and dimensions of the object. As soon as this is removed, it immediately goes off. The only chance to steal it would be to substitute the gun with another identical one. 
but being one of a kind, it's absolutely impossible. I'd say it's a foolproof system. Understood. Goodbye. Goodbye. These are pebbles of pumice stone, light, and with a thousand uses. A few pumice stone pebbles could come in handy. They're light but resistant. It's an old engine, but there's no gasoline. It's the access door to the church. I think someone forgot this old camera here. Maybe he was disappointed by the subject. Maybe it could come in handy. Here are the pics I took with the Polaroid. Now that the photographic film is over, I don't need that Polaroid anymore. I don't think there are any specialist photography shops here in Bonetown. Hi. Hello. Welcome to the fabulous Bone Town New Pub. Is this supposed to be a pub? It is. It's a full-fledged pub. You have the opportunity to select different drinks of your choice, and it's all automated. At first sight, it looks more like a garage with vending machines. Details. This is the future. People don't want to waste time with chatter. They want to get straight to the point. And I offer what they want. A valid alternative to the old and worn down Bone Town premises. Maybe you should have invested a bit more in the interior design, like moving some tires or getting rid of the tools. I appeal to a different clientele, a bit in the style of Dine and Dash, but more like Drink and Dash. Well, if that is your philosophy, I'd say you've done a great job. I know. Thank you. Is this supposed to be a pub? It is. It's a full you have at first detail and maybe you I well, I know. How is business going in Bone Town? I only opened this business recently, but I'm very confident. The market research I did before opening in Bone Town is very accurate. So it's just a matter of time, and then I'm sure I'll find great satisfaction. What kind of market research? I was passing by Bone Town when I had a car problem. I asked for help from the town mechanic. 
After the hike to check out my stalled car, he asked me if by any chance I had something to drink. And so the light bulb went on in my head. Ding! If people here need takeaway drinks, I'll be here to serve them. So you just relied on the opinion of a single person who happened to be thirsty. Exactly! I know how to read the needs of a village. It's from little things that big projects grow. I have some serious doubts, but I wish you luck. Thanks, but luck doesn't have anything to do with it. Intuition and precise calculations are the foundations of every solid venture. That's right, I agree. How do you handle your operation? Ha! <laughs> That's simple. The vending machines and the signs do their work. I just have to wait for the customers and invest the proceeds in my other passion. Video games. Oh, so you're a developer? Ha! <laughs> Please. I want to make a living. I play everything I can and help developers with my precise and sharp feedback. Of course. Who's the town mechanic? He's a very skilled local handyman. They still call him the blacksmith here. He can fix practically anything. At first I had some problems with the vending machines, and he took care of making them go again. Now he's tinkering with my car. Now that I've moved here, I don't need it anymore. Since I have no urgency to get it fixed, I told the blacksmith he could work on it during the slow times. Since then, I haven't seen him around anymore. I understand. Goodbye. See you soon. It's a 3D printer. It's weird seeing something so technologically advanced here in Bone Town. It doesn't work like that. It's the same printer we use at school. Here on the side is a multi-format reader. It can read USB sticks, CDs, etc. And it's also a scanner to read data directly from images. Once all the info has been inserted into the reader, it'll be converted into data, which will be passed on to the printer. Only then will it be ready to begin operating. It should work. The photos surely have to be inserted here. Very well. A perfect plastic copy of the gun photographed in the shop. This printer model uses materials that faithfully reproduce the original objects by starting from simple photos. This replica could surely come in handy. I can't do that now. The owner might see me. This sign invites me to the marriage. It says, new arrival. Try it. Don't worry. It's an irresistible attraction to the kids. Mm. I'm gonna tidy up. I hope it won't take too long. Finally, let's see if there's a clue. Hopefully it's not loaded. Very good. Inside the barrel was a piece of the map. Roger's piece. I don't feel at ease with a real weapon in my pocket. I'd rather not take it with me. But I can't get rid of it here or the owner would get suspicious. I'd better leave it somewhere outside of the store. Looks like a good spot here. Now it seems much less aggressive. Drugstore of Dr. Fred, Fred Every.
He looks more like a scientist than a pharmacist. Good morning. Good morning. What can I do for you? I was just browsing. No problem. Uh, but please don't touch anything without my permission. I've arranged everything so that it will make my work easier. What work? I'm developing a recipe that will make me rich. I just have to find the final ingredients. Can I have some candies? Unfortunately, I have to say no. The ones you see in the shop are needed to complete the recipe I'm working on, as well as for my livelihood. I noticed. If you have some pocket change, there's a candy vending machine right outside the shop. You can take as much as you want. It's only five cents for a candy. Thanks a lot. What are you working on, exactly? It's a recipe of my own concoction for a new, non-alcoholic drink. As soon as I find all the ingredients, I'll patent it. I've written everything I need on this piece of paper I found in the back room. There's still some ingredients missing to complete the recipe. Then I'm sure my life will take a turn, and I could say goodbye to Bowtown. Can I help you somehow? Hmm, let me think. Uh, oh, maybe there's something you could do. I need to go to the warehouse to get some things I couldn't find anywhere else in town. But I need a specific plant that grows here in these surroundings. It's a plant with white flowers that only grows in places exposed to the sun, but also with enough moisture. No problem. I'll see if I can pick one up and bring it to you. No, 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 no. It's, it's extremely delicate. Any contact with the acids in human skin could ruin its essence. You should use specific instruments to pick it up and carry it. If you're willing to give me a hand, I can provide you with all you need. What would I get in return? Fortune and glory, kid. Fortune and glory. Tremendously epic. All right. Very well. Help yourself to the container in the trowel near the door. Once you've identified the plant, use the trowel to put it in the container. I figured as much. Thanks. It will also take me a while to find what I need in the warehouse. Uh, we'll meet back here. All right. What's that piece of paper? I honestly don't know. I was going through the back room when the new recipe suddenly hit me. I grabbed the first piece of paper I came across to write down the ingredients. Can I see it? I'd rather you not. Our sector is very competitive. If I let you read the ingredients, you could steal my recipe. I can give it to you after the recipe is completed, when I'll be sure nobody will copy my work. Okay. Goodbye. See you soon. When you find the plant with the white flowers, Make sure to be as gentle as you can. I'll do my best. The owner was clearly in a great hurry to leave. It contains a lot of jelly beans. It only works with five cent coins. Really flashy. Hello. Hello, dude. Peace be with you. May I help you somehow? I like the selection of instruments in this shop. Thanks, dude. It took years to stock up so much choice, to test every single instrument to make it harmoniously perfect. As in an orchestra where everything must be perfect? No, dude. No. I I'm talking about harmony, with a capital H. Each instrument has a sound that connects your inner self with the motion of the universe, making you a part of the whole. And did you find the formula for this harmony? Dude, for more than 50 years, I've experienced things that link me with the harmony of the universe. But the path is still long, and there's still a lot to try. <laughs> That's not hard to believe. 
I'd be curious to know what kind of experiments you conducted. Better not ask certain things, dude. In this case, I agree. Is smoking allowed in this shop? Dude, who do you take me for? I could never go against the law and cause harm. <laughs> it looks like you're smoking. No, dude, this is the new frontier. Electronic cigarettes. I see. Aromatized flavor? Uh, yeah, you could say that. An aroma that expands your mind to connect you with the whole. I'm content. I don't want to investigate further. Goodbye. Goodbye. I wish you peace and love. It seems to me these are rare pieces. It's a tuning fork. A tuning fork can always come in handy. Excuse me, can I take that tuning fork? Sure. It's available to customers to find harmony. Thanks. Hey, there are other musical instruments here too, but these seem to be more ancient. It seems antique, very antique. There's an inscription, Walter Fly 1712. Walter Fly is the same name that my father wrote in his letter found in the library. Hmm, it looks like a mechanical piano. I can't play it. To make it work, a musical role would be necessary. I never saw one so old though. There's an engraving, Walter Fly 1712. Don't touch. Property of the Fly family. A musical triangle. There's a plate here too. Property of Walter Fly. It's a beautiful specimen of cello. I haven't played one of these in a while. Mom wanted me to learn to play an instrument at all costs, and my choice was the cello. It seemed to me the right mix between a classic violin and a modern guitar. It's a bow for a cello, but the strings are missing. It's a bow but it's so old that the strings are worn out. I'll take it with me. If I can find a way to replace the strings, I can use the cello. Have you ever heard of Walter Fly? I'm thinking, dude. Uh, I think he's a singer from the 60s. No, wait. Dude, inspiration? It's just about to come. It's been a while since I heard that name. Walter Fly was a distant relative of mine. My third or fourth something or other. If I recall correctly, in the back room is a mechanical piano that belonged to him. Dude, he was like a musical genius. A sort of Beethoven of his age. Just that he didn't play in big theaters, only on transport vessels, or so I recall. Plus, he was very good at mechanics. Dude, he knew how to put things in harmony. What do you mean? The harmony between music and mechanics. Everything revolves around harmony, dude. In the back room, there are still instruments at the time Walter Fly came here to Bone Town. I understand. How come the instruments in the back room are not on display? <laughs> For the harmony of things, dude. Those instruments must be in that room. If I move them, I'd change the order of the things, and it wouldn't be good at all. Really? Nah, actually, no, they can't be sold. One of my great-great-grandfathers put a clause on that action. The flies can sell all instruments, except for those that belong to our progenitor. I think it's a sign of respect for the legacy he left us. If I sell them, I'd be going against the will of my ancestors, and I'd ruin the harmony. Dude, harmony is important. I have no doubt. It seems something is missing from the piano in the back room. Dude, you have sharp eyes. That is one of the first mechanical pianos. It works with a specific roll that makes the melody start. Can you tell me where I can find a roll? Impossible. I know there was only one for that model, but it was lost long before I was even born. My father told me that his grandfather loaned it to someone. For what reason, I don't know. And then it was never given back. I have no idea where it might have ended up. Thanks anyway. Goodbye. Goodbye. I wish you peace and love.
It looks like a chimney, but strangely, it seems to be covered by a huge number of engravings. Maybe now they will come in handy. Got it. It's not a chimney. It looks more like a roll with a series of engravings on it. I don't think I still need these bulky tongs. There are still some prizes inside. I wonder how it works. It's an old attraction. You must strongly pound the base to make the weight go up the vertical rail so that it strikes the bell and makes it ring. Is it possible the solution could be so easy? It seems to have worked. I won a prize. Very nice. Let's see what this is about. Small Teddy, property of Rock Lafitte. Rock Lafitte? Could he be the same man from my father's letter? It would seem he was a pirate with a soft heart. It'd be better to check this plush more carefully, just as I thought. There's something hidden inside. The very smart Mr. Lafitte hid his piece of the map, the only place no one would ever look for it. Better add his part of the map to the other pieces. I don't need this plush anymore. I hope Mr. Lafitte won't be offended. Such a nice little animal. Actually, scratch that. I'd rather not. I think it is the only one able to digest it. Great, I can finally rummage through its nest. Finally, I managed to get rid of that bird. A five cent coin. It'll surely be useful. Five-cent coin. Do what you gotta do. Perfect. A jelly bean. No horse can resist a treat. Better put it inside the manger. A well-groomed tail. Being very careful, I should be able to take what I need. Easy, horsey. You won't notice a thing. That didn't go too bad. Now I have these amazing horse hairs. I hope they come in handy. Good idea. This way I should get a perfectly functioning bow. Thank you. 
It should work. What was that? There's a hideout in the wall. The opening mechanism seems to have activated with the sound of the instrument. If I remember correctly, it should be played like this. Another noise. The hideout opened a little bit more. I don't need the bow anymore. The roll should go here. That noise again. Finally, the opening is big enough to allow access, at least for a hand. Perfect, I can get my hand through. It's a piece of paper. Actually, it's a piece of kid's map. White flowers. Maybe this is the only place they will grow. The place is sunny and damp at the same time. These are just the conditions the pharmacist described. I think these are just the flowers he's looking for. I hope they grew spontaneously. Interesting. Seeing such a huge ship represented on a big stained glass window is not something you see every day. I wonder from which religious source the master glassmaker took inspiration. It's accurate in every detail. Actually, now that I'm looking at it carefully, on one of the sails there are even some micro-inscriptions. It's a shame I can't get any closer. The story seems to continue. The boat is about to reach a safe haven. And in the end, a flourishing city. Good morning, Father. Good morning, son. I was admiring the beauty of this church. You're right. It's a real piece of art. It dates back a few centuries and is all thanks to an ancestor of mine. After he traveled across the ocean, he settled here in Bone Town. Seeing the condition of the village, he wanted to build a place of comfort for wayward souls at all costs. What was the name of your ancestor? Edward Drake, the first minister of the Bone Town community. Upstanding guide of Bone Town's people, unblemished pastor of the community. Yes, Father, I think I understand. This calling has been handed down from one generation to another, right up to today. Can you tell me anything more about Edward Drake? My ancestor? First minister of the Bone Town community, upstanding guide of the Bone Town's people, unblemished pastor of the community. Yes, that one. Before coming here to Bone Town, it is said he was a skilled glassmaker. All the stained glass windows of the church are his handiwork, created by his powerful hand, fused with the sacred fire of faith, designed with the ecstasy of supreme adoration. Yes, really beautiful. Yes, son. Every time I look at them, the fervor of the Drake's ignites within me once again. Can you tell me anything more about Edward Drake? My ancestor? First minister of the Bone Town community, upstanding guide of the Bone Town's people, unblemished pastor of the community. Yes, that one. Before coming here to Bone Town, it is said he was a skilled glassmaker. All the stained glass windows of the church are his handiwork, 
created by his powerful hand, fused with the secret fire of faith, designed with the ecstasy of supreme adoration. Yes, really beautiful. Yes, son. Every time I look at them, the fervor of the drakes ignites within me once again. How are things going for the Church of Bone Town? Under my guidance, there's nothing to fear. Unfortunately, my flock has been reduced in number, but not in the strength of its faith. There are just a few troublemakers. A few kids who still don't have the patience to listen to my small two-hour sermons, but nothing more. How come Bone Town is in this condition? Progress. Bone Town remained a pure city, like when my ancestor arrived and never adapted to progress, and the latest events surely didn't help. What events? There are weird stories going around. Some of the faithful said they've seen people, not locals, digging around the city. We warned the mayor, who went personally to the places in question, but he found them already abandoned. Rumors say these excavations caused a hydrogeological instability that's depleting Bone Town's water supply. Fortunately, the holes were filled in again to prevent any damage to our flourishing city tourism. What do you mean exactly by flourishing tourism? Son, just the mere chance to visit our holy church should be good reason to come to Bone Town. Ah, little St. Peter. Maybe you're exaggerating a little. Plus, we have a lot of other pleasant attractions. Here in Bone Town, we don't lack anything. Library, museum, amusement park, one of the most famous inns of the area. I wish I knew that earlier. I'm staying at the Dead Man Inn. That one, precisely. Everybody envies us for it. Who exactly envies the Dead Man Inn? Come again, son? Nothing, father. I was just reflecting on my luck. What's the reason, in your opinion, for these illegal excavations? Rumors say that under Bone Town, there are veins of precious materials, and that the excavations were tests conducted by companies without city approval. The mayor would never let the city be disfigured. What materials might be in Bone Town subsoil? Some fantasize about golden veins. Others say it's copper or tin. I think there is nothing at all, or they would have surely realized it when they built the city. There's been no findings of any precious materials, either today or in the past. In doubt, the mayor made put some signs around that forbid excavations in all areas adjoining the town. Goodbye. Goodbye, son. The alcoholic content of the liquid in this flask is remarkable. It could work. Done. The flask is empty. I don't need it anymore. You just have to press the button. Let's see what happens. Don't you dare! This is an order! I won't repeat it a second time! Father, was it you who screamed? Son, even the most meek and calm man would lose his temper over this outrage! Hmm, I don't understand. What are you talking about? Somebody dared to kickstart the devil's car. I still don't understand. Outside the church is a machine. A wicked machine. The kids of Bone Town used it to play. All that clamoring and laughter disturbed my concentration. It's not easy to write a two-hour sermon, but it's necessary to maintain a straight-laced community. I instructed never to use it anymore. And it's been years since it fell quiet. But today, someone has transgressed. It'll be necessary to rely on the Holy Scripture again. Are you planning to write a sermon about the Scriptures? Oh, no, son. This situation has to be resolved in the most drastic way. I have a task for you. You'll have to restore the order of things. 
I don't think I'm the right person for it. You're here in my presence, so you're the right person for the job. I didn't want it to come to this, but things are escalating. Take this sacred relic. It will be your mission to fix it and place it outside the church. Everything is already set up. A sacred aperture will host the word. It seems like just a sign to me. Young and pure of soul, it's the word that will prevent the newly started havoc from spreading any further. But it just says, play forbidden. Isn't that enough for you? My mind cannot suffer distractions. My sermon must be impeccable. Carry out your mission. But the sign is broken. Ask for help from the blacksmith right outside. Maybe he can help you. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye, son. I need help. I'm on a mission from God, or rather, from the Reverend. In this case, I can give you a second. What do you need? The Reverend has entrusted me with a mission. I have to fix this sign. Can I take one of your tools? I might have what you need. Inside the toolbox is a multi-purpose tool that serves to tighten, bolt, even open some specific locks. It's the only thing I can give you for your mission. The rest I need to repair this wreck. Make good use of it. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye. Be sure to make good use of it. As always, sir. Good idea. Perfect. Now the sign has a certain stability. It should work. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished, Father. Very good, son. I can sense that now the church and my concentration are protected. That hellish car won't have any power anymore. Technically, it's not off. It can be used again, but the word will stop it. Okay, if you say so. Goodbye. Goodbye, son. You just have to press the button. Let's see what happens. Ah! Oops. Technically, it wasn't all my fault. I just followed the Reverend's instructions to the letter. It's all... What happened? Somebody, some ungodly soul guided by an evil hand, damaged the sacred stained glass windows. Have you seen any black sheep wandering in my church? I think I saw some kids playing up front. I thought so. Surely it was one of them. Can you describe the person? I glimpsed a brown-haired guy. Anything else? Skinny. Any distinguishing marks? Freckles. It's clear. Classic Richard. I'll go and resolve the situation. Nobody can disfigure the sacred church of Bone Town. Shelter of the poor. Symbol of faith. Beacon of the community. It's a fragment of the stained glass window. It seems to contain a piece of paper. Weird. I could have sworn there were some micro-inscriptions on the glass. Actually, this glass shard contains a piece of the map. Supposedly the one belonging to Reverend Drake.
Let's try. It works. I heard a click. Empty. It seems so strange. There's something that doesn't add up in this crate. Let's see. Just as I thought. There's a false back. I just need something to pry it open. It should work. Bingo! The nail file got stuck, but it doesn't matter. There's something a lot more precious inside. It's another piece of the map, and I think it's the teach one. Perfect. Now I have everything I need. My recipe is practically done. It will be a drink that is sure to make waves in the world. Non-alcoholic, dark-colored, sparkling. It can even cure a headache. I wouldn't want to ruin your dream, but I think that already exists. Actually, I believe you're even in danger of clashing with some mega corporations. I know the market very well. I managed to isolate and replace the secret ingredient with another. Really? Which one? No, well, it's the root extract of a... Uh... Oh, hey. Ah, nice try, boy. You almost had me going there. It's the only ingredient that is not present on the list. Take it. I don't need it anymore. Thank you. Better read it away from prying eyes. Wait a minute. This list is a bit strange. I can glimpse something under the text about the ingredients. It's a receipt. It says, I, Dr. Alfred Every, on July 15, 2008, deliver to Steve Bonnet the artifacts found in the basement. In exchange, Mr. Bonnet transfers to the Every family, free of charge, the property of the building where the family business is actually located. The agreements will not be disclosed. Yours faithfully, Dr. Every. It's countersigned by Steve Bonnet, too. To which artifacts is Dr. Every referring? If the agreements have not been disclosed, the only one that would know anything about it is Uncle Steve. I'd better get over to his office to investigate. Weird, Steve's not here. In the meantime, I could inspect his office looking for the receipt of Dr. Every. What a weird globe. It's covered in notes. So weird. There are no notes on these papers. They're all blank. What can they do? Wait a minute. There's a button under here. I could be wrong, but they seem to have been placed in the way to hide something. There's nothing. Let's see what happens by pressing it. I wasn't expecting this. I just thought it was a drawer with some kind of mechanism. It closed back automatically. There's probably another device in this room that makes it open. Why all this secrecy? And what's this room? Better take a look around. There are maps, routes, various notes. They represent months, or rather years, of uninterrupted work. 
I thought it worked the same as the one in Steve's office. Instead, this is just a simple globe. There must be another way to get out of here. It looks like some sort of diary. And what's this? It looks like some sort of diary. There's something inside. I don't think I'm mistaken. This is a piece of the map from Kid's crew. It's surely Every's, the last piece missing. Finally, the map is complete. On this piece, there are some coordinates. 47 degrees north by 78 degrees east. Brilliant. The coordinates are useless without the rest of the map. The light will guide you. 47 degrees north by 78 degrees east. It must have something to do with the old lighthouse. There's also a strange coin. Why is it here? What does Steve have to do with this story? There must be something I'm still missing. Let's see if there's an explanation in the diary. I can't believe this. Steve knew. Actually, Steve is the architect of Dad's death, and all because of his envy and the longing to find Kid's treasure. To think they were so close, almost brothers. Dad really trusted him, but he should have guessed his changing, and Kid wasn't that stupid. All the pieces of the map are needed to find the treasure. I have to escape from here and unmask Steve. This diary will be the proof. Better go to the old lighthouse. The light will guide you. Let's hope that's true. Boss. Hey, boss. What's going on? Boss, we can't find the young Morgan anywhere. Impossible. He can't be volatilized. Continue to search. If he has his father's insight, he has surely discovered something that we've been missing till now. I'm going back to my office. This city needs a person able to guide it. <laughs> All right, let's go. It's Steve and the innkeeper. They're in collusion. I have to get out of here as soon as possible. A rope is always useful. Better let some fresh air in. Good idea. This seems to be the only possible way out. See you soon, Steve. It's the old lighthouse of Bonetown. It must be nearly identical to what it was originally. Then some piece was added during subsequent maintenance, but I guess its basic function remained unchanged. 1699, the light will guide you. I guess it's praise for the job this lighthouse had to do. I wonder how many ships it helped dock safely. There's also a list of things to do. One, start. Two, steer. It doesn't seem difficult. It's the opening to access the actual lighthouse. I think this is the best possible way to use these matches. Once you used a certain kind of oil to light a fire. From the condition of the lighthouse, I'd say it's very likely there's still some left. I'm not risking burning anything, and I'm isolated from other houses. Great, but it's better to close the opening or I'll risk that flame burning out. Good job. It's a rudimentary control box. I think it adjusts the position of the lighthouse. There's a sort of map with coordinates, but there are no other indications. 
Okay, let's try. Finally, the map is complete. There's also the signature of the cartographer, Tom Rayleigh. He really was a genius of cartographic drawings. Now I know why Steve wasn't able to find the treasure. Without the complete map, those coordinates are useless. I need to go to the lighthouse. The light will guide you 47 degrees north, 78 degrees east. Bingo! This is the point marked on the map. Let's see in what direction the lighthouse is pointing. Good! Very well! The lighthouse is positioned according to the instructions on the map. The light points in the direction of the cemetery. Better go check. In adventure books, X always marks the spot. I don't think the X meant to indicate these wooden boards. It'd be better to remove them. A weird votive sculpture. Even if we're in a cemetery, a skull, even a stone one, is always a bit scary. Once there was a legend, to access the afterlife, a boat toll was required. Maybe this coin wasn't used as currency in the earthly world? but rather to pay the ferryman for a journey to the afterlife. Let's try. Where did I end up? It seems like a natural cave. I can't believe it. This is a colony of Mexican psilocybin. One of the most powerful hallucinogenic mushrooms in the world. Professor Jones showed one of these in class when explaining Aztec rituals. Their sour odor is unmistakable, and the conditions for growth seem to be ideal. Humid and lacking sun. Only a strong adrenaline rush can counteract their effect. They're supposed to proliferate only in a few areas in Central America. How did they end up here? I'm also wondering who put these wood barrels here. It's a natural well formed by the running water. It must be very deep. The water comes from some source upstream. It's fresh water. It can't be. The hull outline, the colors on the bulkheads, a red nightmare sailed on the sea. Its slender shape induced all to stop and admire it. The historian Jean de Leon described the adventure galley this way. This is it. The adventure galley. Kid's ship. Who dares? But, but, who said that? Who dares board my ship without permission? Who's talking? Are you a ghost? Show yourself. How dare you give orders to me? Only I can give orders. It can't be. I can't believe this. My... my god. Dad? Dad! Dad, is that really you? I have no sons. I'm the Adventure Galley's captain. My name is only whispered in both the old and new worlds. Some people call me the Scourge of the Seas. I'm William Kidd. Who are you? Dad, is that really you? Don't be cheeky boy. I already told you that I am the captain, William Kidd, and I have no sons. 
Are you questioning the word of a captain? Don't you recognize me? It's me, Willie. What tone is this? Boy, remember who you're talking to. I'm Kid. What happened to you? You're not Kid. You're Henry. Henry Morgan. Don't you ever mention that name in my presence. Morgan and Blackbeard are the reason my crew and I are here. If it wasn't for their betrayal, right now we'd be the masters of Tortuga. Instead, Morgan and Blackbeard mutinied, hired their own crew and attacked us. But nobody can take possession of William Kidd's treasure. Remember well these two names, because they're the worst enemies of Kidd's crew. Morgan and Blackbeard, what I wouldn't give to meet you face to face. And now, speak plainly, for what reason are you here? Da- Captain, I'm the new deckhand you were waiting for. It's about time. You have permission to board and immediately get to work. The bridge needs a clean sweep. Ask the quartermaster to give you everything you need to make this ship shine. I'm going back to my cabin now. I have to plot the route for our next destination. Tortuga is waiting for us. What's happening here? How could Dad still be alive? Why doesn't he recognize me? I better get on the galley right now. I have to get my dad back home. The ship is completely deserted. I guess Dad, or Kid as he now considers himself, is in his cabin to the stern of the ship. It's one of the galley's cannons. It's a cannon from the 17th century. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't use it. It hasn't got a wick. It's an old cannon. It will be more than 300 years old. At least as old as the adventure galley. I don't want to shoot a cannon. What's happening now? I hope it's something important. Captain, can you tell me your story? Is this the reason you embarked? I hoped to understand how you ended up here, Dad. I have no time to get angry now. Go back to your duties. You can hear my story from the other members of the crew. Someone stole the last barrel of grog. What? This is really serious. But the quartermaster can take care of it. Anyway, no less than a hundred lashes with the cat of nine tails for the guilty party. Stealing the grog? The nerve. Anything else? There are rats inside the magazine. That's the reason you've been brought on, deckhand. Try to earn your daily rations. Anything else? Sorry, Captain. I'll leave you to your business. Good. Go back to your duties, deckhand. Some boards became ruined over time, creating a crack that shows the cabin below. It should be the Captain's cabin. Dad looks busy. He completely got into the role. Dad is seated at the captain's desk. There's a strange smell coming from the cabin. Don Quixote de la Mancha. It's one of the first editions. Life on the Seas, Rules and Tasks on Board a Ship by William Kidd. It seems Kidd was writing a treatise. Interesting. They look like nautical charts. Probably routes of the adventure galley. They look like nautical... Probably... Clothes from the end of the 1600s. Their fabrics are very fine. The guests of this room were treated with a certain care. These are books on dressmaking in the 1600s. Evidently, Kid cared about being up to date on the evolution of European costumes. Or some guest left them during his holiday on the adventure galley. It's an old hat. I guess it belonged to some illustrious guest who lodged here. I don't know if his stay was willing or not. An old three-cornered hat. I think it belonged to some captain. Or someone from the upper class, anyway. Some well-preserved clothes.
It's a relatively new cannon. Probably after the last battle, Kid replaced the cannons that weren't working anymore. Better not. The ship is docked on this side. There's a risk that the shot could ricochet and cause damage. It's a wooden mannequin. According to a chronicle of the period, these wooden mannequins were used to make the crew size appear larger. The fear factor and the number of armed men visible was usually enough to win a battle without even fighting. Somebody carved the name they gave to this mannequin in the wood. Jimbo. It's one of the oldest cannons on the ship. It has probably never been replaced. You can tell by the notches engraved on it. Every notch shows a battle in which it was shot. Eight notches, so eight battles. An interesting tidbit of information. I guess it's still armed and ready to fire. It's an old sword. I guess it's seen many battles. This old sword could come in handy. Maybe I can learn how to handle it. If I'm not mistaken, near my house they just opened a school. The Swordmaster. That should guarantee success. Yuck, the hilt is all sticky. Time must have corroded the handle's material. It's surely the door that leads to the hold. It's locked. Who knows for how long? I have to find the key to enter. I could ask the captain if he knows where I can find it. What's happening now? I hope it's something important. I'll need the key to access the hold. You still aren't an official member of the crew. You must earn this honor. Every new member must get to know the ship and gain the trust of the rest of the crew. I think I already saw everything and talked with everyone. Let's see if this is true of you. Answer these three simple questions. First, name at least one member of the crew, except the captain, that you met on board. Jimbo. Second question. According to which code have the rules of life on board been drafted? Life on the Seas, by Kid. Third and last question. How many battles have we faced until today? Eight. Well done. You have the honor of becoming one of Kid's pirates. Among us, there's a pact of mutual friendship and loyalty. You deserve the key to access the hold. Thanks, Captain. I'm honored to be part of your crew. Sorry, Captain. I'll leave you to your business. Good. Go back to your duties, deckhand. Perfect. Wow! The legends were true. This is the result of years of piracy in all the seas of the world. Coins and jewels of various kinds. There are also vases with sublime finishes. The temptation to examine or take some of those coins is strong, but Dad takes precedence over everything. First, I have to take care of him, and then together we'll study the galley and its treasure. A golden mask. It seems of European origin. It's a mask. It doesn't seem to come from the Americas. I think it's the loot plundered from the assault on some ship coming from Europe. This old mannequin was used to deceive the enemy. The more mannequins there were, the larger and more dangerous the crew seemed. I could use it to distract my dad and enter his cabin. If I could disguise it as a pirate, I could make it pass for one of Kid's most bitter enemies. If I'm not mistaken, he named Morgan and Blackbeard earlier. I really see it as a Morgan. 
This gives it an aura of mystery. A classy touch. The hat makes it look more important. They seem the right size. I don't think there was much variety of measurements on a pirate ship. It's starting to look like a member of the crew. Let's try to make it meaner, discreetly threatening. Jimbo the pirate really looks like Morgan now. What's happening now? I hope it's something important. Captain, there's Morgan on the bridge. Morgan, damn scoundrel. You finally came back for the final showdown. It's really you, foul traitor. What nerve you dare show. By returning to the ship you turned your back on after it welcomed you as a child. Prepare yourself to face my wrath. While Dad is busy, I can access the captain's cabin. The day of record. These are the nautical charts of the galley. They will be worth a fortune. With these, it would be possible to retrace the ship's routes and identify the places it visited. I can't deal with this right now. It's more urgent that I find a way to get out of here with Dad. It's the chalice from which I saw Dad drink. From the pungent smell, I'd say he put in some of the mushrooms I saw in the cave. Dad has placed the logbook to protect the chalice's contents. Since I'm here, I better take them both. The same acrid smell of the mushrooms I saw in the cave emanates from the chalice. This could explain many things. Dad managed to survive all these years on a mixture of water and mushrooms. Even in small quantities, they sustain any organism that feeds on them and provide vital energy. On the other hand, they're also a powerful hallucinogen. Dad's state of shock following his fall from the cliffs, combined with the sight of Kid's ship, made him believe that he was the captain. If he keeps drinking from this chalice, he might never wake up. I have to get rid of this chalice. Professor Jones taught us that a strong adrenaline rush will counteract the mushroom's effect. First the chalice and then the adrenaline. One thing at a time. It's time to end the game. Don't show your face again, Morgan. Look who's back. Henry and his kid, the young Morgan. How did you manage to get here, Steve? It wasn't difficult. I was looking for you all over town, and suddenly, what a stroke of luck. I saw you entering the crypt in the graveyard. I waited for you a long time. Eventually, I decided to enter and I saw the tunnel. Henry, I didn't think you were still alive. I am partly relieved. My regret was consuming me. In the end, you were right. Kid's ship was docked here in Bone Town. How dare you come aboard my ship without permission, and offend a member of my crew? Who are you? Henry, don't you recognize me? It's me. Dad, Captain, it's Blackbeard. He was also able to get on board. Blackbeard, yes, I recognize you now. I see that you and Morgan are still inseparable. You'll end up just like him. Henry, not again. You leave me no choice. I understand, Henry. I'm ready. Let's see what you can do. On guard! The day of reckoning. Finally! We'll see who comes out victorious. Prepare yourself! I was born ready. Can't you do any better? You'll see. Let's see what you can do. On guard! It's an engaging tool. I could stay here admiring them all day if I didn't have to save my dad and myself too. I'm you won't get away with it. Let's see if you can handle me. It should work. It's not a cannonball, so it won't have such a devastating effect. And now the coup de grace. Fire! I did it! Heck, I didn't see that coming. The racket from the cannon was more devastating than the shell itself. Better go back on deck and alert Dad.
You don't stand a chance this time. We'll see. I admit it. You defeated me, Henry. A victory over a man who was once a friend has no value for me. Captain, I'm sorry to interrupt your duel, but I think we need to go. The cave is collapsing. Captain, what are you talking about? The adrenaline caused by the duels with Jimbo and Steve is reducing the effect of the mushrooms. Hurry, let's go. There's not much time. Not before seeing the treasure. I've never been so close to it, and I have no intention of leaving now. But Steve, not now. There will be other opportunities in the future. Yes, Steve. The kid's right. Let's run while we still can. Henry, do you recognize me? Steve, is that you? Oh, I'm, I'm not sure what's happening. Uh, it feels like I just woke up from a long dream. There's no time, Dad. Let's go. Dad? H how come? Who? You go. I want kids' treasure. It represents my whole life's work. Henry, just know that I didn't want any of this to happen. Steve! Farewell. Dad, let's go! Okay, I'll follow. Dad, I finally found you. Willie, is that really you? How, how long has it been? Ten years, Dad. Ten very long years. Ten years. So this means you received my letter. Yes, but why did you only have it delivered after all this time? Uh, I sensed that something was wrong with Steve. I could see it in his behavior. When I realized that the search for kids' treasure was becoming an obsession, I started to suspect that he could hurt our family. I hid my piece of the map and decided to deal with him. You are a Morgan. You have the spirit of adventure in your blood. But you were only five, and I didn't want to trouble Mom with such a burden. I hoped that in ten years Steve's obsession would vanish. I decided that if anything ever happened to me, you, after turning the necessary age, would be ready to pick up from where I left off. So I sent the post-dated letter. I read Steve's diary. I know you fell off the cliff. How did you survive? A stroke of luck. I fell right into the sea, and the tide pushed me toward an underwater passage that led directly to the cave. I wanted to find a way to get back to the surface, but I had to recover my strength first. The last thing I remember is some really delightful mushrooms. Then, it's all a blank. Dad, let's go back home. We have a lot of things to talk about. Plus, we have to find a way to tell Mom without making her faint. Elizabeth, yes, we should go back. Ready to leave Bone Town once and for all? Bone Town is not a bad town. As soon as the legal formalities are arranged, we could think about coming back here. Remember, deep inside the cave is still the Adventure Galley. Who knows how much it can still tell the world about the Golden Age of Piracy. Speaking of which, when I took the chalice, I also brought the ship's logbook with me. Here it is. 